Active suspension and worry-free tires packed in this brutally similar to the Miss Scooter construction, with some interesting features on top of that. Is this another great electric scooter? Let's find out! Hey, welcome everyone, my name is Michael and well, this behind me is called the i9 Pro by iScooter. It is indeed very similar to the original Omegia M365, later known as Mi Scooter. However, it's not a copycat. It's a device with its own style, parameters, mechanisms and so on. Disclaimer, this video is based on my own experience with the scooter. It is not paid or sponsored and the product has been sent to me for free by iScooter for a review. They didn't get the chance to view the video prior to publishing, so it is as honest as it could be. In fact, I was a little reluctant to test it at the beginning because of all the similarities to the Mi Scooter, but discovering some of the features one by one, I liked it more and more, especially knowing that it's only 329 bucks right now, making it more affordable than Mi Scooter 1S and the second generation of Pro both. And I think you're going to like the most the information about the performance. Let me show you the unboxing and I've had the regular grade of fun. Always nice to unpack an electric scooter because I'm always curious about what has to be done and what has to be mounted prior to the first riding. Apparently in the case of iScooter i9 Pro, it's only the handlebar which is removed in order to save some space during transportation and the concept is exactly as with the Mi Scooter. There's an extra carrying case which can be used for storing water, a purse, smartphone or whatever you may need. I usually prefer a backpack, but some people are more comfortable with something like that. It's very obvious that most of the ideas are inspired by Mi Scooter. Now, focusing on the i9 Pro. Before the first ride is good to set the expectations, right? Honestly, I didn't expect much, but the specs gave me a hope that it could be otherwise. Hear them out. Motor, 350 watts. It can climb roads with up to 20 degrees incline. There's a dual active suspension on the rear side, the tires are honeycomb solid tires, the maximum speed can be adjusted for Europe it's 25 km per hour, for the States it can be close to 18.5 miles per hour or 30 km per hour. There's a sine wave motor control, Bluetooth support for smartphone app and weight of 13.5 kilos. The board seems to be wide enough and comfortable enough, rubberized and it never felt slippery. Distribution of weight is excellent, easy for carrying, no matter folded or not. And yeah, that folding mechanism is very reliable and easy to use. Being one of the very first Mi Scooter riders myself, and knowing about all the Mi Scooter mechanism issues at the start, this one not only seems to be of great quality, it performed perfectly well in urban conditions in a city with a pretty bad bike and scooter infrastructure. Now, there are a few questions people would usually ask about scooters. Range? How many kilometers can the scooter handle until the battery dies? The menu says that it can last up to 25 kilometers. If you ride at the echo speed, which is up to 20 kilometers per hour, you don't brake, you don't accelerate aggressively, and you weigh around 70 kilos, and there is no wind on top of that. In my case, a lot of acceleration, every speed of around 17 kilometers per hour, mixed usage of both modes. I started with battery level of around 83% and finished at 15% and have covered around 15 kilometers. My weight is 88 kilos and with the clothes and the backpack with the camera gear, two bottles of water and so on, it could be easily a total of 94. So that achievement is great. I get about the same results with the Mi Scooter, with the difference that the echo mode here is not slow at all and the acceleration is not compromised. 350 watts of power on this motor feel a lot more powerful than the 9 bot Max. Acceleration is very interesting, starts slowly, then after the third or the fourth second, the motor goes into full power and the acceleration is really nice. Also, it does a great job up hills, even with close to empty battery, which Miss Scooters are famous for not being able to do well. So, the range and the motor flexibility seem to be both excellent. For prolonged usage and mileage, I still can't say, but expectations are between 2 and 3000 kilometers at least. Operation is very quiet, there's cruise control, you can see the speed in real time. I've got absolutely no remarks about the riding modes. Oh, actually I do, there is no odometer visible on the display, I wish they are also visible in real time. The other question that most people would ask, maximum speed, as mentioned it's 25 km per hour for the European region, so that it's compliant with most countries' regulations. I even noticed on the page that it has dual braking system, 
which is apparently the iScooter marketing team, counting the electronic brake in the motor and the mechanical rear disc brake. It's a very reliable braking system, however, I don't think it's compliant with the German ABE requirements because I didn't find the needed documentation. Furthermore, this doesn't qualify as two independent brakes. But it looks to be okay for most European countries, for the US market and so on. Make sure to carefully check if it is okay to ride at your place because you may be risking to get a fine or even worse to lose your driving license or some points from it. Now, some more words about the performance, because that rear suspension is quite unique and interesting and I wanted to find out if it's any good at all and whether it will bring extra noise while we are riding. Surprisingly, it does really well compensating vibrations. Since we count on solid tires, they are not as shock absorbing as pneumatic tires, so this suspension comes as a nice feature to help you to reduce the vibrations. You can still feel the bumps, but I would say riding comfort is almost as good as having a scooter with air-filled tires, and that's great, especially knowing that you're never going to get a flat tire with this one. Before I wrap up and tell you about my opinion, the best part, there's a smartphone app. Yes, you can control a bunch of things about the scooter. This is how you can enable or disable cruise control, and you can set the maximum speeds, you can check the battery level, the estimated range, total mileage and so on. Even an option to log the scooter for safety reasons. This is the part I was most happy about because it's super easy to connect and it's usable for both iPhones and Android phones. Okay, we're approaching the end and as you know, that's about time to share about the negatives. There are of course some things that I didn't like that much. The major one, it's not recommended to ride this scooter in rain because it's just IP54 compliant only. Light rain seems to be fine if it's a heavy rain, better don't risk it. Cover the display first, because you don't want to damage the electronics underneath. Also, the already mentioned lack of odometer on the display. While the speed and the battery info is visible on a shiny day, I wish I could see the distance covered, because sometimes it helps me to better plan my rides. And there actually is nothing more than that. Yeah, I think the iScooter i9 Pro is a fantastic value pack and another great alternative to the Mi Scooter. Solid construction, materials of excellent quality, reliable mechanisms, solid tires, good performance, quiet suspension and this lovely powerful motor which is pleasure to ride. With range, which with some support from your side can realistically reach around 20 km or 12 miles. All of that costs a bit more than 300 bucks and that's a steal. So that was fun and it's the second scooter I've tried this season. So far, my favorite. I actually think about retiring the Mi Scooter and replacing it with this one. So let me know what you think of it. And I'm also going to try to find you a discount for this one. If I manage to succeed, you're going to find a cop and code in the description below the video. And yeah, let me say it once again, this scooter is totally tech for all approved. And I so much hope that this video was helpful. You can let me know how you feel about it by using any of the buttons below, like or dislike. Also, please don't ignore my request to subscribe to the channel, it means a lot to me and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye!